Why is he going to choose you over another woman? I think this is a great question to be asking. So, and actually this came up yesterday in my video during the hot seat where a woman came on sharing the story of a, a relationship or about a man. She was in relationship two years ago. The relationship ended, uh, it was a four year relationship. And now he's in a relationship with another woman and she's wanting to see if she can get him back. Now, let me just start with this comment. If a man is with another wrong woman, I believe it's wrong to want to consider it for a variety of different reasons, just if nothing else, it's just not good girl code, okay? So if a man is already with another woman, I recognize that while you might want this person back, it might be radically important for you to get to the real root of what is causing you to want to be with this other person, okay? And possibly heal the wounds uh, and any dependency you have with this other person before you ever considering wanting this person back. But let's now differentiate between a man has two choices. Why is he going to choose you over another woman? I know a lot of dating advice tells women that they're doing it wrong to attract a guy. And if you follow my tips, you'll, you'll land the guy of your dreams. Let me just say, folks, that's a lot of salesmanship or saleswomanship when you're hearing that advice, and I wanna offer a different perspective. You know, I have a cheesy line that says, soulmates come into your life for to teach us a lesson, and our true love goes to school with us each and every day holding hands. What does that mean? I believe every one of our past relationships is preparing us to be a better version of ourselves. You know, it occurs to me if you're in midlife, and Midlife, I always say, is after baby making years and before retirement. Um, so the average demographic of the clients I work with are between the ages of 42 and 69, give or take. Is that truly midlife? Well, if you live to be 100, almost 100 like my father, that is midlife. But why I'm sharing this with you, the average person today has had probably fought three to five significant relationships. And what I mean by a significant relationship, a relationship that lasted three months or longer, and I'm not talking about a long distance relationship where you never met the man. Okay, ladies, I'm talking about a day in doubt relationship that lasted for more than three months. Excuse my slurping. The average person said three to five. Why is this so critically important? Because each relationship was a lesson, according to my quote. Each relationship is giving us an opportunity to heal within ourselves. Just like this woman I was sharing about, I asked her, what personal development, self-help, and spiritual work have you done since the ending of relationship? Because she claimed to be all healed, and yet she did little or no work of healing in that getting to the root cause of, she shared with us that she had a significant insecurity that caused them to cause this man to push him, to push him away. So it's an invitation to work and it takes time to heal in many cases from a relationship ending, but more importantly, to step into your power. See, that's the real invitation, all this. What's going to make a man choose you over another woman? That you're in your power. You're in your sovereignty. You are not dependent upon a man for your happiness. That's number one. You have your act together. That's a great place to be, too. You know, sadly, a lot of people are emotionally hurting and wounded right now. And while in, in that space of hurting, woundedness, maybe that financial struggles, we operate from a place of dependency instead of a place of sovereignty. And what's going to make a man choose you over another woman is certainly you're in your sovereignty. Look at anyone in their sovereignty. You know, I know you've heard it from dating coaches. You have to be confident. You have to be in your feminine energy to attract a great guy of your dreams. Listen, we are human beings. We're riddled with flaws. We're riddled with insecurities. And I'm going to share with you what a man needs in a moment for him to be able to choose you over another human being. Now, let's be clear. For a relationship to work, you have to be able to navigate the differences between the two of you. It's natural to have differences between human beings. 
And so navigating that, but more importantly, the capacity to navigate conflict is so critically important. See, sadly, we human beings oftentimes operate from an egoic place of conflict, meaning I'm right and you're wrong. I'm right and you're wrong. So having a personality that recognizes that when two people have conflict towards one another, that you listen to the other person's point of view, you acknowledge that their point of view might be true for them. And by the way, You've got to do this for him and he has to do this for you. Otherwise, it isn't going to work. But if you can't resolve conflict in a healthy way, if you get argumentative, if you get defensive, and by the way, if he does the same thing, it's not healthy either. And believe me, ladies, I recognize that many of you have experienced relationship with what, what is affectionately called the narcissistic man out there. I know it's not affectionate. I'm being a little tongue in cheek. That's because a significant percentage of human beings are rather myopic. They're rather self-centric. And when they don't take ownership on their part of relationship, they can gaslight another human being. So I recognize that being diplomatic isn't always the case when you're with a person who is so severely wounded that they have narcissistic or self-centric tendencies, okay? But that capacity to resolve conflict is going to help you be better prepared for a relationship because every relationship has conflict. And what's going to make him choose you over someone else is you have the relationship skills. If you're not familiar with my chart, um, bear with me for a second. <laughs> it's my relationship skills chart. Where is it? Um, emotional maturity relationship skills chart. This is not a fact. It's merely an opinion. Please forgive the glare. I believe 20% of the population has clinical issues, makes it very difficult for them to be in a significant relationships because they're so deeply wounded that their wounds exceeds their capacity to be in relationship. And while I say 20% have strong emotional maturity and good relationship skills, I say healthy. I'm probably being generous when I say 20%. Most human beings are dysfunctional. Now, if you're closer to this, you have a greater chance for success. Why is this so critically important? Because doing the personal development, doing the self-help, doing the spiritual work, doing therapy will start to improve your emotional maturity when you heal from your childhood wounds and your adult traumas. That's what will make him choose you over another woman. By the way, he has to do everything I'm, everything I'm talking about, ladies, that I'm suggesting you do. He has to do it as well. Also, he needs this one factor I'm about to share with you. He needs this. Otherwise, he won't be able to choose you over another woman. So first, I invite you all to get, a, get an understanding of your attachment style. If you're not familiar with the book, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, I highly recommend reading this. It most likely you have an insecure attachment style. Sadly, most human beings gaslight themselves and they believe they have a secure attachment style. Most human beings gaslight themselves believing they're secure, particularly the single population out in the dating marketplace. Most people have an insecure attachment style. That's not to say, listen, it's okay to have an insecure attachment style. People can, can heal from this. People can work through this. If you have somebody who's willing to do the work with you, this is absolutely possible. When two people are willing to do the deeper work to grow together, those have the greatest chance for success. So knowing your attachment style will set you apart from any other woman out there. Also, Having what I call in the, the way I describe self-awareness is recognizing one fear, one's fears and insecurities, our negative judgments towards other human beings, how our actions affect another human being, our limiting beliefs, our negative patterns that bring us pain. And being able to shift to love when we're in pain, that's what's going to set you apart from every other woman out there. When you do this deeper introspective work, when you take responsibility, self-responsibility for when you get triggered, 
Folks, if you're not familiar with the word triggered, I highly recommend reading this. But when you get triggered, it's an opportunity to work on what causes the trigger. Sadly, here in the United States particularly, we point the finger at someone else. We immediately go to victim consciousness. The minute we get triggered, it's someone else's fault. When we get triggered, it's an opportunity to look inward and say, how can I love myself? How can I heal? What is the cause of the trigger and how can I heal from this? This is what's going to set you apart from every other woman and while he'll choose you over another woman. When, when you're not in a relationship, this is the time to do the, like, okay, I've observed that healing can happen in two spaces. You can do a lot of healing in a relationship, but certainly after a relationship, and that's the time to truly process all of those previous relationships I talk about from a place of what positive things about myself did I learn from each relationship? How have I healed? a childhood wound or adult trauma from my past relationships? What was good about each relationship I had? Hey, it's 11-11 on the clock. <laughs> what was good about each relationship I had? And also, what are you most grateful for within each relationship? When you can become in this empowered place to look at every one of your past experiences, this will better prepare you and this will make you more attractive to the man who has also done the personal development, self-help and spiritual work, who's done the therapy, who's actually worked on relationship skills, who's read the books that I've, I've got right behind me. For those folks who've done this work, they have a greater chance of really reaching relationship success. So I'm going to share a quick story and then I'll give you the one clue that he'll choose you over another woman. Okay. About a year ago, I threw out my back and I was so out of it for a couple of weeks. And during that time, I went to a chiropractor. I did my core exercises. I immersed myself, uh, you know, um, in doing things to heal. Yet sadly, when people's relationship ends, they don't go seek help like a chiropractor, like in, the, in this analogy, like going seeing a therapist. They don't do the introspective work to heal. And just a lot of times people will just binge watch television to distract themselves instead of immersing themselves in the healing. When you've done the inner work, you're better prepared for the kind of relationship you seek. So what's it going to take for a man to choose you over another woman? He needs this. He needs this. He needs to be committed to commitment. Bump, 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 bump. He is committed to commitment. Without a commitment to commitment, when a man is not committed to commitment, it's like going, I'm going to get my car and drive, but I have no idea where I'm going. And I just hope I end up in a place where I'm happy without a direction. People who are directionless oftentimes find themselves just, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll just test this. I'll test this woman for a little bit just to see if this makes me feel good. And I'll test this woman for a little bit. And let me see if this feels good. And I'll test this woman for a little bit. Not even test. Let's even reframe that. I'll use this woman a little bit to see if it feels good. I'll use this woman a little bit to see if it feels good. I'll use this woman just to see if it feels good. I'm just focused on feeling good. That's all I care about. And I'll entertain a woman. I will, you know, take her out to dinners and romancers because it's just about feeling good. Folks, relationships aren't about feeling good. Relationships about being there for one another. Relationships is a service. I, I like the way Chris Rock gives the analogy. You're in the service business. You're there to serve another human being. When a person isn't committed to commitment, all they focus about is, oh, I just want to have a good time. Let's have a good time. Let's just focus on having a good time. Let's not ask the more serious questions to determine, are we really compatible with one another? Do we share the same values? Do we have a vision for our life that is shared? Are our lifestyles blendable with one another? 
And most importantly, do we have the emotional maturity to navigate those conflicts I talked about earlier in this video? See, if you haven't learned these skills, then what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Ladies, the reason why men are not committed to commitment is because their desire, capacity, or vision for a relationship has been, ex it, 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 let me reframe that. Their pain and fears from their past exceeds their desire, capacity, or vision for a relationship. Again, when you're committed to commitment, you have a vision, you have a you have a you have an idea of what you want, okay? But you see sadly, and many people desire companionship, connection, and sex, but they don't necessarily desire commitment nor do many people have the capacity because their fears exceeds their pain. Their fear, excuse me, their fear, their fears and pains exceeds their their capacity. Unless a man is in a good place in his life until he's actually made that decision. Well, Jonathan, I'm in midlife and I don't want to get married again. Folks, what is, listen, if you're 55, do you want to just be dating, keep dating the same guy until you're 75? I mean, like, what's the point if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a, a direction, if you don't have a path to fully commit it? But Jonathan, I don't want to be a nurse or a purse. Well, I get that. I get you, many of you are gun shy because you have past pains, but it's time to heal those past pains. It's time to heal those wounds. It's time to be introspective so you can be better prepared because he'll choose you over another woman ultimately when the two of you find that synergy for one another and you're willing to hold hands together through the tough work I use the word work, the effort required to build the deep roots of trust. That's right, the deep roots of trust. Without the deep roots of trust, your relationship is like a tree in a hurricane wind without roots. It's going to fall over. And I'm here to invite you to start doing all of the work and by the way, this is a never ending journey of work, okay? The work is on oneself. And by the way, you can find that work to be pleasurable and fun too. And when you really get into introspection, it can be absolutely a blast to do the exploratory work, to be in a place where you're actually better prepared for a relationship and you're both committed to commitment. Is this resonating with you? Is this sinking in? <laughs> Please let me know if it is. Excuse my slurp. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. I do my best to read them all in the first 24 hours. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And also make sure you do it on your phone as well. Also, if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link to follow, uh, to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. There's a link to get the books I recommend, to get my join my mailing list, to follow me on Instagram, all listed below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.